Hey, it's March 13th, 2012. I'm Curtis Hollister and you're watching 52 Week Low, the show that profiles public companies trading at or around their 52 week trading low. Today, we're gonna be talking about Iron Mountain, trading on the symbol IRM, and joining me is Robert Weinstein, founder of paytotrade.com. Robert, welcome to the show. Thank you, Curtis. It's a pleasure to be here. So, um, you know, before we get into Iron Mountain, uh, we were chatting a little bit beforehand about, you know, that you're a voracious reader and you're a very technical trader. Two things. Let's. I want to. You've got a book recommendation, but before that, what's your approach to uh, finding a company? How do you source these trades? And then, you know, um, uh, I mean, what's your approach to actually finding a deal? Sure. Um, occasionally, I hear about stocks through the news, uh, financial news, like everybody else. Uh, that's the ex the exception to the rule, though, uh, because uh, typically I have the news turned off in the day. But uh, most of the uh, stocks that I trade intraday, I find out uh, through my scanning computers that look for technical uh, setups for buys and sells uh, on any given day. I'm also in a chat room that uh, other traders uh, will talk about different stocks that are in play. But uh, for the most part, um, stocks usually enter my uh, field of view from a technical point of view. So with the, you mentioned your scanning computer, is this program that you've customized yourself or is this a kind of a general off the shelf product that you uh, just set certain criteria on? Well, it's a little bit of both. Um, I use uh, TradeStation and StockBinder for scanning. Um, sometimes I use a uh, Ninja Trader as well. And what they do is they take the universe of about 5,000 shares and they break them down into minute increments or minute uh, bars and look for uh, certain types of patterns. So there's actually a bank of computers that I have uh, running the scans. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, you know, like any, like anybody that's, you know, kind of always looking for the next deal and looking for the new kind of edge, you are a voracious reader. You're, lo you're reading books basically every week, every weekend you're saying, what's the book you're reading yep. right now that you would recommend to people? Right. Uh, yeah. Mo and most books that I read are pretty much the same rehash of other material I've already read, but um, I'm, right now I'm reading uh, uh, Trading uh, VIX Derivatives, and uh, Russell Rhodes uh, wrote this book, and um, this one is unique. It's it's worth uh, reading. Its primary focus is about the Chicago Board of Options Exchange uh, mm. for the Volatility Index, uh, also known as the VIX Index, and options that trade on that, but um, any options trader is probably going to get a lot of value out of it. Uh, due to some of the uh, the theories and the concepts that are uh, discussed in the book. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I, I mean, uh, you're, that's going to be available. Our details on that are going to be available on your blog at paytotrade.com. Right. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I finish it, I'll be writing a, a review on it, and it's going to be a positive review. So uh, that's why I thought I'd uh, mention it here. Great. Let, let's jump to Iron Mountain. Um, the the you know the message from the mountain obviously is these guys are have been down for a little while. Um, what's the state of the right. union right now, and what's your kind of opinion on on where they're going and or where and where they've been? Right. Um, Iron Mountain uh, caught my attention from as a result of uh, being in what I would consider an oversold status. Uh, they their service their information management services for both physical, like paper, x-ray uh, type of material, um, and also uh, electronic uh, information. Um, they, they offer their services in uh, North America, Asia, uh, Europe, Latin America, and um, they're kind of a old school storage uh, with paper uh, company that's trying to find its way into uh, the new digital age, so to speak. And uh, cause they, they're the, they're the major yeah. player on the block. They invented the space of effectively document management, housing and d destruction, right. right? Right. They've been around for uh, at least 30 years. I think the CEO has been with the company for about 30 years. Um, although he took some time off and then he came back uh, last year in April. So, um, right. The, the, the company has been, uh, has been around for a long time, and I believe they're based out of Boston, if, I'm, mm. if I remember correctly. So when you're looking at, at, at their business, obviously, and trying to, there, there's going to be less and less paper that they're going to be effectively touching and getting paid for all the time. They've got a huge investment internationally in kind of trucks and, 
and destruction and warehouses and so forth. I mean, do they have do they have an opportunity to actually play a role in the digital age? Is it is it backing up or is it storage? What I mean, how are they going to do that if they're used to if they're used to shredding all the contents? Right, and and that's a that's a, a big question the market has been asking as well, and one that I believe why they've become discounted. Although they could become more discounted as well, but I think I think the bottom is is setting in right in this in this range. Um, they did sell off New Zealand and Italy, uh, the divisions that they had there. So that was um, somewhat of a of a change. And they've also recently sold off some of the media and uh, the media divisions, uh, which one would think that they would want to aggressively get into. Uh, the CEO has made uh, uh, comments about that they didn't want to pay up to buy other companies, and so they're taking basically what I perceive as a wait and see approach mm -hmm. uh, that may work, that may or may not work out so well for them. Uh, but it was the, the technical aspect of the company that originally brought it to my attention. It's been a fairly schizophrenic stock over the last 12 months. I mean, yeah. we've seen it from $35, $35 down to, you know, just around 2762 in the last 52 weeks. I mean, that's, and, but it's lots of peaks, lots of troughs that whole time. Is it is it just their right. general volatility volatility around people kind of coming in and exiting this stock, or are people holding it for a long time? Right. I, well, I think it's there's some of both, uh, but lately it's certainly the volume has been very strong, and and people have been you know trying to position position themselves with it, uh, and that's another aspect that you, that you brought up is the fact that the price has been so volatile. It currently uh, appears to be on the bottom end of that volatility, mm -hmm. and so if if this was a stock that you wanted to perhaps like swing trade or you know three four weeks uh, holding periods, if you look at the chart right right in this area would be the period that you would buy and allow it to appreciate maybe a dollar fifty two dollars a share and then and maybe let it go. Yeah, um, it certainly it certainly appears to be a stock that um, there's profit to be made. But maybe you don't want to marry it. Yeah, I, I mean, if it's been doing that for the past twelve months, it's probably likely that it's going to be doing it at least for the next six months. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I would presume so. The market, the options market, is certainly pricing that in. Uh, they they pay a twenty five cent dividend, and that's coming up uh, this month. As a matter of fact, it goes ex dividend. Uh, but uh, the volatility is high enough where you can. Um, you can buy the stock and sell just out of the money uh, calls, for example, like in the April series, and actually receive a, a sizable uh, premium. So, mm. uh, so the the market is pricing that in. Uh, if you look at uh, the beta of the stock, though, it it wouldn't uh, you wouldn't get that impression immediately because the beta is actually lower than the market. It's less than uh, 0 0.9. So, um, even though the numbers uh, would yeah. give the impression that it's not a very volatile stock. Just just a quickest glance at the chart would yeah, tell you otherwise. Exactly, 0.87 is what it's uh, beta set at right now. Um, so right. from the point of view of, of um, what you see the trade is for these guys, you know, what do you have a number of options or do you have a, one that's kind of your favorite? Oh, my favorite one would be doing, uh, would be selling a, a covered call. Uh, <laughs> and selling it in the April series uh, to try to take advantage of uh, grabbing that dividend that's coming up this month and um, and selling and holding long enough to, to try to get some of that appreciation. Uh, so that, that would be my, my favorite trade. Um, and the other reason why I like that is, is the hedging aspect of it. The PE is still uh, relatively high, which says to me that this stock could, even though it's right now it's oversold in my opinion, uh, could still continue to uh, to fall. Uh, the forward PE is almost uh, 22, and anything over 20 I consider to be in the expensive uh, uh, mm. arena. Uh, gotcha. But there are several things that I do like about the company. Uh, the year-over-year -year, uh, earnings growth is uh, over 9%. Uh, last week, uh, like I mentioned, it, it became oversold, 
And uh, the margins of the company, the historic margins, have been uh, very stable. And uh, so it, it does, um, Iron Mountain does have a, uh, have a lot going for it from even a, even a long-term uh, investment uh, point of view, although I don't necessarily think I would want to, uh, to hold it as a long-term. Yeah, no, it sounds like a short-term trade. Like you said, get out within the next you know, 30, 60 days and right. and you know pull the trigger move on obviously this is generally a well-run company it looks like you know to be um in operations as long as it has been to continue to grow you know profitability but at the end of the day they're in a business that is effectively trending down you know at you know in, right in it does look like they're making uh bookie whips and, yeah <laughs> you know how long how long will that last yeah uh, that, you know one has to believe uh you know, paper is you know has has the days numbered um at the same time if you look at the sales from like 2003 2004 uh 2003 they did about a, a billion and a half sales and and in 2011 they just reported three billion in sales so uh, yeah in that in less than 10 years they have they have doubled but um at some point you have to wonder you know how much growth is there left and the stock is priced, you know, for the forward PE of 22 is priced with, with quite a bit of growth uh, in mind. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, if they're, uh, like I said, it seems like a good company, you know, you know, I don't know if their right. next generation business line is going to be, you know, the disposable, disposal and destruction of iPads. But um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yes. it's going to be kind of a, a tough go of the more that they're directly aligned with paper. Correct. So. Yep. Okay, Robert, thanks so much for your time. It's always a pleasure Thank having you. you. Uh, if you'd like more information from uh, on any of the trades of Robert Weinstein, you can visit his website at paytotrade.com. If you'd like more industry profiles from public issuers, you can visit investorchannel.tv. I'm Curtis Hollister, and thanks for watching 52 Week Low.